What's up guys, in this video, I'm gonna share with you a little experiment I was doing on Facebook, trying to figure out what the best settings are for uploading photos to Facebook. And as you guys probably know by now, if you are a regular follower of this channel, that I take a lot of photos, I manage a lot of photos, and I post quite a few on the internet, and I describe them in some of my videos. So before we move any further, um, I'm gonna take this chance, as always, to remind you guys that if you like this content, you end up liking this video, please smash the like button below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and of course, ring the bell for notifications. Moving on. So on my Facebook page, I've uploaded a number of images uh, to demonstrate a few different things about the way Facebook handles photos. So before I begin, a couple of things that you should know about Facebook. When you upload photos, and the world is uploading photos, there are so many photos and videos and other type of content being uploaded to Facebook that they need an efficient way to manage all this. Facebook has occasionally redefined how photos are handled on their site. Currently, all photos above a certain size are resized, which you'll find out about in just a minute, and they're also compressed using just algorithmic image compression. So what they're trying to do is create a smaller file size while trying to maintain the quality and look of the photo as much as possible. However, in my opinion, I think they do a pretty bad job of the latter. Resizing a photo, fine, I understand, is quite straightforward. However, compressing oftentimes uh, diminishes the quality of the photo and has to be managed appropriately. So the goal of this is try to minimize the work that Facebook does to your photo. So let's start with the first two images that I uploaded. First, you'll see that one has the image and it says that the message says that this PNG image was uploaded as 3000 by 4000 pixels. So that means that it's 3000 pixels wide and 4000 pixels tall. And you can tell this just because this photo is taller than it is wide. The next image is this one here, which is 4000 wide by 3000 tall. Now, if we further examine these images, what I did was I have a version here that I've uploaded to Facebook and then I downloaded to Facebook. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, what you can do is actually right click and save these images. So what I did earlier was I went ahead and did that and I have these here for comparison. To the naked eye, these images look identical. However, if you look at the information on this image, you'll see that there are some differences. So first of all, as you can see, as it says in the image, the original image before I uploaded it was 4,000 by 3,000 pixels, and it was in a PNG format, and it was 170K. After Facebook had its way with it, the dimensions of the image were reduced to 2048 by 1536. That means the maximum width it will allow is 2048, or anything above that will be resized by Facebook. The other thing to pay attention to here is also the file size. So it looks like 133 KB is a file size that they're okay with. As you can see, the original being at a larger image, even though it's a PNG, was 170 K. And then it went down to 133 K. Now with the other image, wow, I hope that didn't hurt your eyes, guys. But basically, um, was originally 3,000 by 4,000 pixels and 148K. And then it went down to 1536 by 2048. So basically those dimensions flipped. So it did the same thing. It maintains the, um, the proportions, but it'll just downsize either the height or the width, depending on which is larger, to 2048. And so that was my first conclusion, was that it'll resize it to a maximum resolution of 2048 by 2048. The other thing is, is it took this 148 KB uh, image and it brought it down to 107. So it looks like 107 K Facebook's all right with. Now, the next experiment I did was to upload two different types of PNGs. Now, the reason I am using PNG right now, because PNG is a format that will look very, very crisp for flat colored images. That means not photos or anything with gradients, but flat colors. So as you can see, it's either blue or white on this, red and white 
flat colors and PNG works really well for this. Now what I did here was I actually created an image that has a gradient on it and then a flat colored image just to kind of show the differences of what Facebook does. Between the two, you know, you're not gonna be able to know that there was any difference. However, once again, jumping back to our example images, I have the version before I uploaded it to Facebook and after I uploaded it to Facebook. And as you can see, I started with a 2048 by 2048 PNG image with flat colors. And the original image was 75K and it was 24, uh, 2048 by 2048. And then the resulting image was 68K. So it really didn't strip away too much. To the naked eye, as you can see, there's actually absolutely no difference between the two images. They are exactly the same. So that tells me that Facebook really didn't do much of anything to it. Now let's jump over to this one. This gradient, as you can see, it's a nice smooth gradient, 2048 by 2048, and it was in PNG format. But this was a 1.5 megabyte file. Now, if you compare it to the flat image, as you can see, and as I mentioned before, PNG is not really ideal for gradient images. It's really good for flat colored images. So once we go back to the uh, image over here, um, you'll see that it's at a 1.5 megabyte file size. And of course it's 2048 by 2048. Now let's go over to the version that I downloaded from Facebook. And right away, what you'll notice is that there are some lines that have formed here. Now, you may not be able to see this on YouTube, so what I'm gonna do is actually include links to these images in the description below. But to the naked eye, there really isn't much of a difference, but if I zoom in and I look at this in its actual size, you may see that there's some degradation of the uh, image here in the form of all of this. Do you see these weird sort of this pixelation that's occurring? around the lettering, and then you see the colors of the gradient appear in stripes. Now the other thing is, because this PNG image was so large, it was a 1.5 megabyte file, Facebook actually converted it to JPEG, which brought it down to 126 kilobytes after they did their compression on it. So what does that tell you? That tells you that anything that's 1.5 megabytes or more is gonna get compressed and converted into a JPEG format. So the two conclusions that we've met so far is that anything above 1.5 megs is gonna get compressed and then anything above 2048 pixels in either height or width are going to get resized. So in my next experiment I uploaded two versions of the same photo. Now this photo is of New Han, I hope I'm saying that right, in Copenhagen, Denmark. By any standard, it's a pretty complex photo. There's a lot of details in the roof, the windows, the water, the people, there's a lot of different colors. And so the reason I did this was to kind of demonstrate any loss in detail if there was gonna be any. So this was the original uh, file, which I will go over the file uh, image size in a little bit. And then of course I resized it to the 2048 width um, and still kept it at 100% quality exporting it out of Photoshop. So now if we look at that image, the original was an 8,221 pixel by 4,000, uh, I'm sorry, 5,481 pixel image and it was at 240 pixels per inch and the file size was 32.5 megs. That means that Facebook is going to have to do an incredible job of chopping this photo up and um, reducing its file size and quality in order to bring the file size down. Now this is the version of that same photo that I downloaded from Facebook and that was the one you were just looking at a moment ago on Facebook.com. Now if we compare it to the resized version, first of all you'll see that there is no apparent loss of detail. Of course, if I were to zoom into these photos, you'd probably uh, be able to notice it a little bit more. But at this current size, and you're looking at this hopefully at 1080p resolution, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference. However, when I look at the Facebook version versus the other Facebook version, there are some differences and they're very subtle. You can probably notice right away that there's some weird stuff going on with the colors. 
And then also, if we just kind of focus in this area, you may see that the image also sharpens up a little bit when I go to my resized version. And that is because I had already resized and compressed the image before uploading it to Facebook. So because I resized it, Facebook didn't have to do a lot more work to bring the size down. So it went from 3.5 megs to just under one meg. And then on this version, it went from 32 megs down to about 690, about 700 megs. So this one actually was, it tolerated a larger size image, which ideally you want. You do want a larger size image because it is gonna preserve some of that quality and detail. However, there may be some additional loss. So jumping back to Facebook again, let's go back to another image that I had uh, uploaded. Now, let me actually go through this one for just a second too, because what I did here was I took a gradient image that had a gradient and I uploaded at three different quality levels just to kind of show you what happens. Now, this one was uploaded at 100% quality and it's a JPEG image and it seems to have done okay. There is some weird striping that's going on here but then as I go to the 70% quality, there isn't much of a difference to the naked eye. Now, once I jump into this one though, the 20%, there is a noticeable difference. And namely, I see a little bit of sort of garbage pixelation right around this area and around the letters where there is a lot of contrast in the photo or in this uh, graphic rather. And so this is where you kind of see the difference. So if you focus here on these stripes as well, the striping is much heavier in the 20% quality version versus the 70%. So it looks like you can probably go to 70% without too much of a noticeable difference. There are some little subtle differences, but they're really gonna be hard for most of your viewers to notice. So finally, in my last example, I did the same exact thing with three different versions of that new Han photo. Now, starting with the 100% quality, now going over to the 70% quality and then the 20% quality. Now, what I encourage you to do is go over to my Facebook page. I'll link it in the description below and check out these photos and download them and mess around with them, whatever you want to do. And you'll see that there are differences, very subtle differences in some of these photos. So when I take the 20, 70 and 100% quality versions that I exported out of Photoshop and I sort of compare them side by side, you will see that not only are they at three different file sizes, but they also have subtle differences in the detail. So at 100% quality, you'll see that there's a greater loss of detail. Like let's just look at these uh, chimneys for instance, or some of the lettering on the buildings. And you'll see that it actually sharpens up a little bit at 70% and then degrades again at 20% quality. So it looks like 70% is probably the ideal for this photo. Now, you're probably wondering about why I keep droning on about these qualities and what the hell it is that I'm saying. Well, if we pull up Photoshop, um, basically what I'm talking about here is the export settings when you export a photo from Photoshop. So if I run up here and I go to File, Export, Export As, then what we can do is actually preview the image at different quality levels. And not only that, it'll tell us what the target file size is. So I already have it resized to 2048 by 1365. So that maximum width has to be 2048, as you know, because Facebook is going to resize it. And then I'm going to go to 100% quality or 100% uh, zoom level here, just to kind of make sure that I'm not losing too much in the detail. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go in just a little bit further to kind of show you what the differences are. So here we are at 200% zoom at 20% quality. So if I go to 100%, you'll see that the photo has sharpened just a tad. And this is the perfect scenario, obviously, is where there's absolutely no loss. Now at 70%, there's really no visible difference. And I can make this a little bit bigger for you guys and there's really no visible difference in the quality of the photo. Now, if I go back to 20 or down to 20 per, 20%, you could see that things like this, these words here, sunny side, aren't as visible anymore. Um, they get a little fuzzy there. So I'm gonna bring it back to 70 just to kind of show you the difference. You see how it sharpened up just a tad? Well, I don't know if you did or not, but again, jump over to Facebook, check it out. I'll link it in the description. 
but that's what I mean. And then what you can do is just hit the export button and then it'll export to uh, anywhere on your computer and then you can upload it to Facebook. And then of course the last thing I would recommend is convert to sRGB. Facebook is going to do this for you as well and this is just something I know from reading online as well as the course of this experiment. So guys just to recap, the ideal settings it seems that Facebook will take and not compress or distort or destroy your photo too much is basically 70% quality out of Photoshop at 2048 max width or 2048 max height and then that way Facebook is doing minimal work on your photo and that way it doesn't destroy the photo because as we've seen it does do a number on the quality of the photo. Now the last thing I kind of wanted to show you was that guys when you're interested in delivering quality content to your audience, what you want to do is upload from your computer. Don't upload from a mobile device. And just to kind of show you uh, what I mean by that, I'm going to go ahead and air beam uh, one of the larger photos to my phone and then upload them and then show you what happens uh, from a mobile phone. So I'm going to upload this image from a uh, Facebook app for iOS. Okay, so the photo has been uploaded now. So now let's jump over back to the computer to see what Facebook did to that mobile uploaded photo. So here's the post that I uploaded from uh, iOS. And as you can see, it is a much lousier photo. So I'm gonna download it just to kind of show you guys what it actually did. So now, not only do we have an image that just looks terrible, but as you can see, it uses much smaller dimensions. Tell, you know, just to kind of uh, let you guys know, I airdropped that photo over to my phone, which kept it in its original resolution, original file at 2048 pixels, and it actually brought it down to 960. So please, please, please don't upload from your phone unless you really have to. Try to do it always, always, always from a computer. So guys, after making this video, I realized that I had actually made a mistake. I uploaded those photos from the Facebook Pages app, and that's where I usually manage my Facebook pages. However, if you're using the standard Facebook app, there's actually a section in the settings area that lets you turn on high definition photos and videos from the mobile app. So once you've switched these on, you should be able to get a higher quality photo. Now, I'll do a video in the future about this setting and maybe we can do a quick experiment on that. As a matter of fact, I even encourage you to do so. Anyway, I just wanted to apologize about that. That was a quick mistake that I made, but I still encourage you to upload from a desktop version of Facebook. Thanks guys, carrying on. And that way you're maintaining the maximum possible quality. Of course, like I showed, it's not that great, but it's good for most screens. And because Facebook um, formats things usually smaller than 2048 pixels, um, it's always gonna look sharp on Facebook. It's just that when you download the photo, if you wanna try to use it for anything practical like print purpose or anything like that, you're not gonna have a practical image. But basically guys, overall to recap, it looks like mobile is always gonna resize your image to 960. Desktop is gonna resize anything larger than 2048 down to 2048. And of course, uh, if it's a flat image, upload it in PNG. If it is a complex image, upload it in JPEG and export that JPEG out of Photoshop at 70% quality. Thanks guys, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you guys have any questions at all about photos or really anything having to do with any of the topics that I uh, have covered in any of my videos, please comment in the comment section below. And as always, if you guys enjoyed this content, you felt that it was helpful, please like, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. Thanks, guys.